In today's video, I'm looking at the Saint Smart Gen Mitsu 3018 Prover edition. The 3018 Prover is the newest and probably the most refined or most complete iteration of Saint Smart's Gen Mitsu series of 3018 CNC routers. And this unit was sent to me by Saint Smart for purposes of this review. Now, a bit of background about the Gen Mitsu 3018 routers and 3018 CNC routers in general. These 3018 routers are Arduino powered. CNC routers that are built by dozens of Chinese companies and it's almost impossible to tell them apart. They were primarily designed and built to be inexpensive desktop CNC routers or mills for engraving wood and plastic, performing milling and slotting operations in plastic and wood, and even milling PCBs or soft metals like aluminum. While several generic manufacturers produce and sell these machines, Saint Smart's Genmitsu machines have emerged as the quote-unquote branded option. And Saint Smart has been making these machines for quite a few years now and currently sells a few different flavors. The version I'm looking at today is the newest version and is also probably the version most suited for folks looking to get into CNC machining as soon as possible without spending weeks or months tinkering to get the machine working. So let's take a closer look. For starters, the machine came semi-assembled and it was neatly packed with all the fast and accessories clearly labeled. In terms of assembly and setup, this machine requires the least amount of assembly of the 3018 machines, but it still takes a few hours to assemble and set up and does take quite a bit of care and patience to get it working. The user manual and assembly video that they provide are actually pretty useful and well detailed. Once assembled, the machine is fairly compact, measuring in at about 15 inches by 15 inches by about 12 inches in height. And just to give Give you a sense of how compact it is, you can see that it takes up much less than half of my 48 inch workbench. The machine's frame is made from aluminum and is pretty rigidly built. However, the spindle housing or mount is made from plastic, though that doesn't really seem to affect the performance of the spindle. The spindle has a maximum speed of 10,000 RPM and uses a 1 8 inch ER11 collet, which allows you to use bits with a shank diameter of 1 8 of an inch or approximately 3 millimeters. You can also buy ER11 collets with diameters as large as a quarter of an inch, but do remember that these larger bits will put more strain on the spindle and could affect the spindle's life. The work bed measures 300 millimeters in width by 180 millimeters deep and is also made from aluminum. The bed has slots to accommodate T-slot fasteners for clamps. Material can be clamped to the bed using the provided clamps. I cut a few small squares of MDF that I placed under the leveling screws on the clamps and this prevents the screws from damaging the bed. I also recommend using a piece of wood or thick MDF under your material to act as a spoil board. This is especially important if you're planning to mill all the way through your material. Unlike other 3018 routers, the Prover comes equipped with limit switches on all three axes which ensures that the machine stepper motors don't burn out if your G-code program tries to push the machine past its physical limits a nice safety feature to have. Another important safety feature is the translucent acrylic guards on both sides of the bed, which prevents chips from flying all over the place and can also reduce the risk of an end mill or engraving bit breaking and flying halfway across the room. This again adds to its appeal of being a safe desktop machine, and this is a feature you won't find on most generic 3018 machines or even other less expensive Genmitsu machines. And the translucency of the acrylic also protects you in case you choose to use the optional laser engraving module in place of the spindle. The machine also has an emergency stop switch on the right hand side and this just adds another layer of safety in case something should get out of hand. The unit is also equipped with rubber feet which dampen the vibration a bit and also prevents your desk from getting scratched up. In addition to the apparent physical enhancements, the Genmitsu Prover also comes with a few useful accessories. The first and most useful being the offline controller. This controller plugs into the back of the machine and allows you to jog all the axes, set the zero positions for all three axes, and test the spindle. In addition to this, the offline controller also has a micro SD card slot, which allows you to generate G-code using a CAM program, put it on a micro SD card, and run the program on this machine, all without connecting the router to a computer. And they do provide a micro SD card and card reader 
with the machine, so you don't need to buy one. For my first cut on this machine, I cut a piece of MDF about six inches by nine inches in size and clamped it to the bed with a few pieces of spoil board beneath it. I then ran the default G-code program called SaneSmart that comes with the router. I used the offline controller to run the program. Before I ran the program, I set zero points for the X, Y, and Z axes. The machine does come with a Z probe to help you zero the Z axis. I didn't really use the Z probe much as I found it a bit unreliable and I used a manual technique to zero the Z axis. For this cut, I used one of the V engraving bits that came with the machine. The machine went to work immediately and cut out the word SaneSmart relatively well. It did a pretty decent job for a first cut, as you can see from the finished product. After I was confident that the machine was working as expected, I decided to work on my first project. To design this and send it to the machine, I used the Easel Online Cam program, which is absolutely phenomenal. Super simple and yet a powerful interface to design and connect to your machine. I imported an image of the Hindu Lord Ganesha, which I was planning to engrave on a piece of red acrylic. Since this was my first project, I decided to keep my cut depth very shallow at 0.6 millimeters and used a 1 16th inch end mill from the Sane Smart end mill set, which is sold separately. This is a decent set of starter end mills. I'll leave a link to that set below. Connecting to the machine was fairly simple and there are several videos that explain how to do this. One thing to note though is that you have to disconnect the offline controller from the machine when connecting it directly to a cam program. I then zeroed the three axes using the software interface and sent the program to the machine. It came to life and went to work cutting the design. I occasionally used a shop vac to vacuum up the chips and prevent them from being melted and damaging the cut. Just a tip for acrylic, you want to slow the machine's max RPM to 8000 RPM and this speed seems to produce the cleanest chips and as you can see the final product was pretty impressive especially for a first project. Next I decided to test the machine's dimensional accuracy. I wanted to see how precise the machine was when cutting slots and holes in acrylic. I had designed a chassis plate in Fusion 360 for a robotics project I was working on and decided to use it as my test sample. I exported the face I wanted to cut as a DXF file and then imported it into easel. The whole process went pretty smoothly and the machine again went to work cutting these holes and slots. These were all through cuts and the finish on these cuts was pretty impressive. As you can see from the finished plate, I verified all the dimensions on the plate and was glad to find that the dimensions were accurate and the tolerances were acceptable. And as you can see from the picture, all the components mounted to the plate exactly as expected. For the final test, I decided to mill a simple design into a piece of 6061 aluminum just to see how it would handle things like soft metals and copper PCB boards. I used a three and a half inch square piece of aluminum that's an eighth of an inch thick. The shape is relatively simple and I used a very shallow cut depth of 0.5 millimeters. Since I wasn't really sure how the machine would handle metals, I used easel's default feed and plunge rates to start and for the tool I'm using this one six 16th inch diameter carbide end mill that's made by a company called Speed Tiger. It's much better than your bargain basement Chinese made end mills and does a pretty impressive job. I'll leave links to these end mills below and as you can see the machine handled the job much better than I expected and produced a pretty good final result. So if you're looking to cut copper PCB boards or make shallow cuts in aluminum this machine can definitely handle it. And a tip about cleaning chips from the T-slots and other crevices, a soft one inch paintbrush works great to clear all the chips out from all the narrow crevices and the T-slots. I'll leave links to the brush I use right below the video. Now these Genmitsu machines are famous or oftentimes infamous for mods or modifications. Surprisingly, I only made one modification. I replaced the terrible quality wire wrap that came with the machine with nicer split wire wrap that made the wiring a bit neater and more professional looking. And I highly recommend that everyone who buys this machine machine does this? That is, until of course the manufacturer decides to spend a few extra pennies on a slightly better wire wrap. I'll leave a link to the wire wrap I used right below the video. Now in terms of maintenance, the only thing that you need to do regularly is to lubricate the lead screws on all three axes. And in order to lubricate these lead screws, you're going to use a PTFE or Teflon based dry lubricant. And I'll leave a link to the PTFE lubricant that I recommend right below the video. And the advantage of using a PTFE or Teflon dry lubricant is that it doesn't 
attract dust, dirt and chips from your work and you want to spray a little bit on the lead screws after you're done with each job and then you want to jog the axes to ensure that the lubricant gets spread evenly through the entire lead screw and it's important that you do this after every job especially if you don't use the machine very regularly. So should you buy the Genmitsu 3018 Prover? Well that all really depends on your expectations. If you're looking for a relatively compact, mostly complete and inexpensive CNC router to use to learn CNC for home projects or even small prototyping jobs, it's hard to find a better deal than this machine. However, if you're looking for a more commercial grade machine to start a small business, this is definitely not the machine you want. For those applications, I recommend investing the extra money and getting the Inventables X-Carve. There is no real point in starting with a less capable machine in the hopes that your business will pick up and then you can buy a proper CNC router. You're just better off financing a more robust CNC router that pays for itself right out the gate. I'll leave links to both machines below. If you own a CNC router, let me know about your experience in the comments below. And if there are any other things about this machine that you'd like me to do a video on, leave me a comment below and I'll see what I can do. Hope this video has been helpful. If it has, please hit that like button and subscribe for more reviews, unboxings and how-to videos. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.